السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Brothers, um, you'll be hearing a lot of talk about brotherhood, and uh, mashallah, and a lot of the speakers are talking, uh, will give you a lot of information. But what I want to touch on is a couple of things, uh, one really major issue and major topic. But before I get to it, I want to talk about where did the brotherhood start from? Because we're not here at this camp to tell you, you need to start loving each other now and form that brotherhood now. It's not like that at all. Actually, Allah SWT created that brotherhood between us even before we came to this earth. When Allah SWT collected all of the souls and He took the oath upon us, and He said, Alastum bi rabbukum faqalu bala. When all of the souls from, the, from Sayyidina Adam to the last person to exist, was all the souls were collected and Allah SWT took the oath upon us. That's when our brotherhood started from. So we're not talking about our brotherhood starting today or tomorrow or this afternoon. Our brotherhood had already started. So what we're trying to do in this camps and participating together is reminding ourselves of this situation. Reminding ourselves that we're actually not from this world, that there is something better and grander for us coming. And to get there, we have to get there together. And we have a lot of examples to show us how to get there. And we have a lot of information at our hands in the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to get us to that point. So we need to understand this, where we came from and where we're going and how do we get there together. And one of the famous dua that uh, Rasulullah used to say is Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirata hasana wa kina adhab al nar Oh Allah, give us all, not me or him, give us all the best of this world and the best in the Akhirah and, and uh, protect us from hellfire. So this word us is always inclusive. In most of the diet you'll hear, it's never about me. It's always about us. So you, you've heard from speakers before me who's talked about what you love for yourself, you love for your brother. And we're not talking about, you know, you don't sit there and make a diet and say, yeah, Allah, give my cousin, you know, a C63. This is not the issue. If you want what's best for him, you want what's best in everything in this dunya, and you want what's best of everything in the akhirah. This is the true brotherhood. This is the true love. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established us upon. And, and, and the sunnah of Rasulullah is exactly that. So once we start to understand that and we revive that in our hearts, then we can start moving forward together and truly loving one another going forward. The issue that I really wanted to talk about is knowing your brother, understanding your brother, understanding his condition, his concerns, his affairs, where is he at in his life. Here at the camp, subhanAllah, when I hear the adhan for Fajr, I get up in a flash. At home, wallahi, I feel like a, a truck's hit me. It's very difficult to get up when I'm at home. But here, I get up immediately. Why? Because I feel the love and I feel the energy and I feel the support around me. It's a very different here than it is at home. So when, when we're here, try to get into the habit or try to get into the situation where you actually understand each other and understand where, how, much, how far this energy and this love can take us. One of the things that, that I wanted to talk about in brotherhood and understanding your brother is understanding his emotional state, his condition. What's the, what's the condition of his heart? What's the condition of his you know, emotional position? A lot of times, you know, we're, as um, uh, Brother Ahmed uh, spoke about, you know, we're taught in the Western world that you, know, you have to be rough, you have to be tough, you have to stand your ground and you have to take your haq. But that's not the case. Sayyidina Muhammad never did that. He used to always understand the affairs of the, the companions. He understood the affairs of the people. He knew what, where their pains were and, and what pleased them. When the ayah came down, One of the Sahabis heard this ayah and he was petrified, absolutely petrified that he went in you know, MIA for three days. And Rasulullah recognized and realized that this Sahabi is missing. <laughs> they said, where is Fulan? Somebody go and find you know, where he is. What's his affair? Why is he missing? Why is he not with us? 
So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu knew the condition of his companions. He knew who was present and who was missing. And he took it upon himself to find out why. What was their situation? And when we know from the, from the you know that this Sahabi was so terrified because he had a very powerful voice box. And his natural level of speech was very loud. So whenever he spoke, his voice would be higher than anybody around him, even higher than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So he was petrified when this ayah came. But look at the position of Sayyidina Muhammad. Look at the example that he's left us on. Is know your brother, know his affairs, understand what situation he is in. It's not a shame to be you know, troubled. It's not, a, it's not a shame to have you know, highs and lows. It's not, it's not a shame to be you know, depressed or be you know, ecstatic. So, but once we understand each other, once we know, you know where everybody's at, you can support your brother. When, you support, when your brother's on a low, pick him up. If your brother is in need financially, help him. Or ask other brothers, let's all help him together. This is what brotherhood's about. Wanting the best for your brother, everything in this dunya, the best of everything in this dunya, and the best of everything in the akhirah. Not just bits and pieces. Not just, let's go out for a good time, and when you're in hardship, I don't want to know you. This is not true brotherhood. True brotherhood is wanting the best of everything in this dunya for him. And that means taking him with you when it's time for salah. Helping him financially when he's in need. Picking him up when he's sad or depressed. This is the true love between us. And through this, we find that we, we end up fulfilling our sunnah and we fulfill our ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hold tight to the rope of Allah together, united. And do not be disunited. This is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you support your brother in his time of need, in his time of hardship, in, in times where you can put a smile on his face, know and understand that you are fulfilling a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will, guide, will enter you into the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important, my brothers, to understand the situation of, of your, what your brother is in. These days we're being consumed and overwhelmed with technology. It's so easy to send somebody a text message. Wallah, brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. But what does that mean? What, what is actually the meaning of that word? If you say to your brother, I love you for the sake of Allah, that comes with a lot of responsibilities. And you've got to be up for those responsibilities. Fulfill them. Don't just pay at lip service. And then when you see him at the masjid, you don't even give him salam. But on the text message, you write him an essay. A poetry of love and muhabba and, you know, and then when you see him in reality face to face, you don't communicate with them. Or you don't even want to know about his affairs because you don't want to get dragged into it. No. You have to know the affairs of your brother. You have to know his emotional and physical and mental status. You have to know whether he needs help or doesn't need help. And you have to know that when you tell your brother, I love you for the sake of Allah, it comes with a responsibility. And you have to fulfill your responsibility to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers, I urge you to understand with full conviction. We're not telling you to create brotherhood. We're just merely reminding you of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us. He has already created that bond and that, that, that love between us. So we're just saying revive it and bring it to the surface and the forefront of your mind. When you see your brother, stand by him, support him, help him. And um, wallahi, if you do that for, for, for your brother, they, he'll do it for you as well. And together we'll be successful. And like Rasulullah said, said, you know, make the dua. Ya Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirata hasana wa kina adam al Oh Allah, make us all successful and have the best of this world. And make us all successful and have the best of the akhirah, the hereafter. And, and protect us and prevent, the, uh, prevent us from hellfire. This is the brotherhood. This is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the path of Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu ka ala hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum. Zakallah khair, brother Hussain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for this reminder. One day while the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is standing with one of the companions, 
And the Prophet is just having a quick chat with this companion. Another companion goes past. So the companion that was standing with the Prophet Muhammad tells the Prophet O oh Messenger of Allah, see this companion, see this man there, see this believer. Wallahi, I love him for the sake of Allah. So what did the Prophet Muhammad do? He took opportunity of this. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam straight away told him, have you ever informed him of this? Did you tell him that you love him for the sake of Allah? So he says, oh Messenger of Allah, no. I've never told him that I love him for the sake of Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam pushes him and he tells him, go and say to him, go and inform him that you love him for the sake of Allah. So he goes to the other companion and he says to him, brother, wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah. So the other brother says to him, may Allah love you for what you loved me for. Uhibbuka fillah. I love you for the sake of Allah. So the response was that my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you for what you loved me for. So look what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did. In Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam wanted to make sure that the companions love each other. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam jumped on any opportunity that he saw that will bring the brothers and will bring the companions closer to one another. That even when one companion just mentions to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I love this companion, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells him, go and say to him, I love him. Now these days, I can tell your brother I love for the sake of Allah. Shu ana, binit ana, am I girl? Yeah, for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. I love you for the sake of Allah. You love me for the sake of Allah. We all love each other for the sake of Allah. But it shows you the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he took this matter so important, how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jumped on any opportunity to make sure that he brings the companions closer to one another, that he pushed this companion together and informed the other companion that he loves him for the sake of Allah. Just for the sake of the other companion getting closer to him. And you yourself, you experience it. When a brother approaches you and tells you, brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. You become a lot more closer to this person. You become a lot more closer to this person that tells you, I love him for the sake of Allah. Especially when it's coming from your brother. And that's why Islam is about loving each other. Islam is about respecting each other. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa not only that he encouraged us, and he alayhi salatu wa sallam taught us to love one another, but he also teaches us the avenues and the ways in which we could love each other. And one of them is that you give salams, and the other one is when you see your brother and you love him for the sake of Allah, say to him, I love him for the sake of Allah. And I say it sincerely to every single one of you that I love every single one of you for the sake of Allah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he made us love each other for the sake of Allah to unite us under his love. Because what happens in the after, my brothers in Islam? In the after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forward a pulpit, a member. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs will envy those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant this member to and who's and to whom is this member to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then calls upon Aina al mutahabina fi jalali where are those that loved each other for my sake today I'll give them this pulpit I'll give them this member for them to stand on as an honor and a privilege for them Subhanallah. Loving each other for the sake of Allah is strength in this world, is success in this world, is victory in this world, it's honor in this world, and it is also honor in the hereafter. For that, love each other for the sake of Allah. And this love needs to stay with us, not only in this camp, but more importantly, after this camp, until the day of judgment. Enough said when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says in the hadith from amongst those that Allah will shade under his shade when there's no shade except his shade in the hereafter are two brothers, two men who loved each other for the sake of Allah and continue to love each other for the sake of Allah until they met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving each other for the sake of Allah. Can you imagine the honor, the virtue, the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you just because you loved your brother for the sake of Allah. So love each other for the sake of Allah and continue loving each other for the sake of Allah and maintain this love for the sake of Allah.